Hello, this video is going to be over an 837 transaction that's a healthcare claim. And, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to extract one claim out of a transaction file and rebuild that transaction so you can use it, for example, for testing. Uh, this could also be useful if you're working in a support scenario where you need to identify a claim and maybe you need to run a test on a certain uh, claim that has issues. So we're going to extract uh, an 837 and then we're going to show you how to rebuild this file with the appropriate envelope and any other data that you might need with it. Uh, so let's just jump right in. I'm going to use the CAT adjudication system and I've got a uh, file that I've selected. Uh, I'll give you a, a very brief overview uh, of the transactions. You can see in the sender and the receiver and the billing provider and then uh, the subscriber and the payer in the claim. And if we were to scroll down on this one, you'll see that it continues on and it terminates right here uh, at the end of the first charge line. Uh, you'll notice that there's no SE segment here uh, or IEA. And so uh, this is one scenario. There are several scenarios depending on looping. Now, if, if you don't understand looping, that's kind of a prerequisite to this video. You might want to check out uh, lesson number three, which goes over uh, 837 looping. And, and that would cover looping uh, at the billing provider level or at the subscriber level or at the claim level. Uh, and all of those uh, will be uh, crucial uh, if you're going to extract a claim out of the middle. So I'm going to do this one simple one here. And uh, I'm going to use just a common editor. Uh, so that uh, might help you see how we, how you might do it in your edio, editor in a um, in a real world scenario. So I know I want this first claim, so I'm going to simply copy this all the way down to up to and inclu uh, up to and right before the uh, hierarchical segment where there's a subscriber. Okay, and I'm going to open up a new file and I'm going to copy that in here. So you see I've got an envelope, an ISA, and a GS, and then an ST. So most of that's over here. So all I need here is really basically to close this out. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You could just type in your own SD segment. That that might be probably one of the easiest things to do. And then you would need to copy or, or count the number of, of lines actually. I'm, I'm just going to go through this briefly. See how this is uh, the first segment? I'm, I'm going to also copy the ST02 ID because we're going to need it. If you're going to start counting those, you'll see that this is line number one. And if you have nicer editors, this is just notepad. You can actually scroll through there and it'll give you the number. So yeah, this is line two. That looks like about 42. If I've made an error there, you can correct that on your own. Okay, so I've counted the number of segments, and then I put those in SE01, and I took ST02, and I copied it here. Now, the next thing that I'm going to need is a GE segment. And since I have only one claim in this transaction, I'm going to put a 1 there. And then I'm going to need to grab the ID from the group segment, GS. And it's going to be in GS06. So you see that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and here he is. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to put it right down here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an IEA segment. And since I only have one group in here, I'm going to put the number one there. I'm going to go up and grab the interchange control number, which is right here. It's a nine-digit number. I'm going to put it right there. Now, as this is completed now, we have a complete transaction. I do want to show you that sometimes if you cut and paste, you need to be careful about this segment right here. Because if I were to cut this out of the middle of another claim, this SGL counter might start at 200, 400, 4,000. It could be anything. So if, if I'm going to make this only uh, one transaction, then I have to follow my HL segment. So I'm going to search on HL. And I'm going to look for them. So the first one says HL1, which is correct. If it says something different, then I want to change that to 1. And then I'm going to look for the next segment. Now, when I look at the second HL segment if I'm going to have one claim in this um, transaction. HL02 needs to say 2 and HL, I'm sorry, HL01 is going to say the number 2 because it's a running number. See 1 and then 2 and then so forth. And then HL02 is going to be the parent pointer over here. So you might have to adjust those if you cut those out of the middle. So, so this is one claim example. I'm going, let's do another example where uh, we're pulling a claim out of the middle. Okay. And here's one right here. I've claimed, I found a transaction here. Now notice on this one, it happens to be the last one, so I'm just going to copy it. Just like you would in a, in a real world scenario. I'm going to paste it in here, okay? So I've got an SE and a GE and IEA, but I don't have any top segment, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the first original transaction, and I'm going to copy the first... Let me show you something else here real quick before I do that. You see this right here? Because it's looping at the subscriber loop, I have to copy up to the subscriber loop, okay? So here's the original transaction. I hope you guys can follow me on this. 
ISA. Now look, here's an, an HL segment, but you can't stop there because look, HL3 says 20. We were not looping at the provider loop, at the provider 2000A loop. We weren't doing that. We were looping at the 2000B subscriber loop. So if I copied just to this segment right here, then I would miss the entire billing provider. So that's why it's critical for you to go over lesson three on looping. So we know that it, it actually started at the subscriber loop. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go now to the claim that I'm creating. I'm going to paste this in here. All right. Now, as I go through my HL segments, this uh, is numbered correctly. It's number one, and it's the source. This one is number two, and it's a subscriber. This was the top of the third one. So I'm going to delete that, okay? Now, if I were to create a copy, for example, three or four claims out of the middle, I would have to visit each one of these HL segments and do two things. Number one, I have to make sure that this HL01 counter started at one and continued incrementing one, two, three, four, five, evenly by just one. Okay, that's the first thing I have to do. The second thing I have to do is make sure that HL02 is pointing to its parent pointer. So this subscriber belongs to this provider and his ID or parent ID is number one. So that has to be there. So as you go through the HL segments, you have to uh, validate HL1 and HL2. Uh, now I've, I will go down to the bottom of this and I'll also take a look at the end of the transaction. Notice that um, G, the GE segment says too that there are two transactions. Well, there's only one transaction in this, so I have to change that. Okay, And I might verify that the GS ID is 2003. And I need to verify ST02. You see this ST02, it actually says 1001. So I need to make these match. Okay? It says 001, 0001. And for GE, I've got 20003. And if I go to GS03, or GS06, I'm sorry, then you'll see that I've got the same ID. And then for the IA, I've got the same number. It's a nine digit interchange control number. And so we're good there. So the last thing that I want to check is how we count the segments. And they have to include the ST and SE segment. So if this is one, this is actually 42, okay? And when I went through there, I found out that I got an extra segment or extra transaction I did not want. So I'm just going to delete it, okay? Um, that was probably a, a pretty good example. Uh, you notice that I, I had modified that second transaction, uh, but this is all part of, of a walkthrough process that you're going to have to do. So step number one is cut out the claim that you want. Step number two is that you need to validate the IEA number. That's the interchange control number. Then you need to make sure that the GE02 matches the GS06. And then you need to make sure that the SE02 matches the ST02. And the fourth thing that you need to do is verify that your segment count is correct in the SE01. Uh, and as I did a walkthrough, I found out that there was a spare claim in here, and so I deleted it. And you might have to do the same thing as well. Um, other things that, uh, that you can verify when you look into these transactions are the dates. Uh, there's a six-digit date in the um, ISA segment. It's the only six-digit date in A37. It has to be uh, the latest date in this um, A37 file. But you'll also find dates in the GS segment, like here, in GS04. And um, then you can also find dates also in the BHT segment as well. Basically, you're going to have to go through each of these uh, scenarios to make sure that you don't have a date that's older. Now, this is, uh, for example, an, an institutional claim. And so you have date ranges, um, like you know, you have a 434 date range and a, and a 435. If, and there's no, uh, there's no DTP 472 uh, at the line level because this is institutional. Uh, there happens to be a 573, which is a check date, okay? But basically, if it's professional, you'll see a 472, and you have to make sure that this is older than your transaction uh, dates there in your envelope, uh, these up here. Uh, there's really, uh, you know, a, a number of details that you'll have to watch out for. Um, I try to make this kind of a, a brief uh, outline of how to extract data. Uh, your files might be different, again, depending on where it looped. Um, if you have any questions about how to do that uh, in the file that you're working on, uh, let me know. I can't promise anything, but I can usually help out. Um, I've built a lot of transactions, um, you know, sometimes from the ground up, uh, from scratch, from nothing, uh, or I've, I've done uh, a lot of transaction builds from parts of data. Uh, again, this is very helpful if you're going to build test data. 
Um, I also have applications that will actually generate volume data. If you're going to, that's probably a, a good topic. If, if you're going to do volume testing and you want to test 10, 20, 30, you know, 60,000 uh, transactions, then you probably need uh, some sort of uh, data generator. Uh, I have some of those as well, and if you want to build one, you know, let me know. I can probably give you some pointers. Uh, but this is, um, this is going to conclude my video here on uh, how to extract data from A37 for either support purposes or for building your own um, new transaction. You know, like maybe you just don't want to deal with, you know, a thousand claims. So that's basically how you do it. I, I hope this helps out. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, leave me a comment uh, or send me a, an email at edi.dallas.soho. Thanks for watching my video. Mm -hmm.